And welcome back to a fresh episode of the Business Growth Show. I'm excited to be joined by Nemanja Zikovic today. Nemanja, a very warm welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hey, Sam. Uh, I'm doing, doing well, having in mind that I'm uh, in the nine days of COVID recovering. So I'm, do I'm doing well and using this time to chat like uh, nice, nice guys like yourself. <laughs> appreciate it dude and I've, I've realized i've not given your intro so for anyone who does know namanja he's the ceo over at funky marketing a company that creates demand generation programs primarily for fast-growing b2b tech companies and helps them to constantly generate revenue with inbound and content strategies at scale so namanja we're not going to mess around we're not going to beat around the bush there's no fluff talk today we're going to be talking about how companies can shorten their sales cycle and increase their revenue. Um, so I'm excited to talk about this because this is pretty much what every company wants to do, right? Um, so it, this is kind of a loaded loaded question, but first and foremost, why is this important to businesses? I mean, everybody wants to get uh, more long-term customers, bigger deals, and they all want to get them uh, in as short period of time as possible, right? That's kind of natural and logical, and that's why this is important. It's what every business uh, lives on. Certainly is, and uh, I think it's it's almost everyone's dream, really, to get the to land the best clients possible for the most revenue, and obviously not not spend months and months trying to trying to get those deals to close, right? Yeah, I mean, um, we are still in kind of a time loop where uh, we, we still a lot of companies go after MQLs and don't realize the importance of educating people, of kind of looking at uh, the, not only at the bottom of the funnel, but also mm -hmm. looking at, at the upside of the things and how important it is for actually getting more people to the, to the bottom of the funnel and, you know, those kind of things. And I thought, to be honest, that we're gonna get over with this, uh, with this talking about MQLs versus SQLs, those kind of things. Uh, a few months ago, while the COVID started, but it didn't happen ever. And uh, I'm not sure at this moment if it's gonna happen, but I mean, it's just the way things are. So let's try to educate the people that are willing to understand and willing to invest in uh, uh, scaling their business. Yeah, I mean, perhaps we can jump into MQLs, marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads and what the real difference is and what you should focus on in a bit. Um, but before we get to that, I really want to talk, I really want to get tactical. I really want to talk about some strategies that you're seeing growth with, both for your, for your own company and for your clients, um, in terms of how we can actually do this, first and foremost, how we can um, bring on board these juicy deals, what, what's actually working right now. Um, and then after that, we can get into how we can shorten the sales cycle and all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, let's let's get right into it. Uh, I mean, uh, what we are doing for ourselves, we are doing for the clients as well. So basically, we are uh, doing the things that we sell to sell our services. And I look at what most agencies are doing, and it's not that, and it's a pity, because it, it looks like they, they cannot do the things that they sell. Uh, and that's what gets actually the, the most of the marketing agencies in a, they got them the bad voice. But anyway, let's get into it. So uh, as, as a B2B company, our focus is, uh, is on LinkedIn because most of the, our target audience is over there. And on LinkedIn, what's, uh, what's working is the personal profiles. They, they run the show. It's not the company pages. It, it was on on Facebook a long time ago. Um, so we focus on uh, what's happening inside the company first. So uh, not only on LinkedIn, but what's happening inside the company. What do I want to say by that? By uh, having a good culture of values and employees that know and respect those kind of things and employees that know the value of the personal branding. So when we have that, we can create sort of a content hub inside the company and educate people uh, on those things, on how to do the copywriting, how to establish their personal brands. And then, only then when it's happening inside the company, we take it on the LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is just uh, an extension of what's happening inside the company. 
Okay. And from the side of the personal profiles, we tend to create the awareness and the brand by uh, focusing on building personal brands of the people from the company. So it's not only the, the, the CEO, not only marketing and sales, but uh, as many people as possible. And uh, we tend to give them the voice. So focusing on hammering over pain points mixed with uh, personal stories. Uh, and then we go to educate people with those kind of that kind of content. When they are educated enough, they uh, go to DMs, uh, reach out to us, they go to the feature us section of the profiles, or they go to Google, they Google our name or the company name. We see that in the Google search console. And if that happens, I mean, we are already in the bridge of building the brand. So basically we are building the awareness and the company's brand by building the personal brands of the employees. Uh, that's one, uh, one step. The and other before, we, before we continue, I've got, let's let's break that down a bit in the manager first and foremost for people that perhaps aren't as clued up on linkedin or don't use it as much why is it important that we focus on the personal profiles rather than the, the business profiles yeah because uh personal profiles has the biggest reach over there because it's b2b as we are seeing it uh right now and as it was like a couple of years ago it was all misty foggy uh not focus on emotions not focus on feeling not focusing on people and people are our biggest assets in the tech base of the base companies so we focus on the people uh our biggest assets and that's how we actually get get the traction that's how we get clients customers depending on what we are selling and when because people still buy based on emotions it doesn't matter if it's like b2b or b2c and LinkedIn is a place when organically we can reach millions of people in, in a year without investing in advertising. Exactly right. Okay. And to break down the, the further points you got into, Nemanja, so we talked about, just like you said quite rightly, so the, the personal profiles of a heck of a lot of better reach, organic reach especially. And when you compare it to systems like paid advertisements and things like that, you can reach thousands with one post. Whereas to do the same with paid media, you might spend thousands or hundreds at least to, to have the same kind of effects. So a really good point. Um, now, moving this forward, you're talking about if you're a company, if you've if you've got several men members of staff, it's it's worth getting them all set up with their personal brand. So if we're talking B2B, then we're probably going to be talking LinkedIn. Um so have you any experiences of doing that, Nemanja? Because this is something we've touched on before. Um, where we've talked about getting your team all on LinkedIn. And we know that some companies have regulations of what you can post, what you can't post. Um, how, how, are you, how are you guys seeing it, or what are you guys seeing that, that's actually working on that sense? Um, yeah, and yeah, is, yeah. is it really important we get all of our team members on LinkedIn, or is it a waste of time? Yeah, it's, it's not important that we get all of them. We you get only those that, uh, that can be of use to us. We don't need like every single developer to, to write posts, but we need him to understand uh, what we are selling. Actually, we need to do internal marketing so we can get people excited about what we do. And we, when we get them excited and they um, understand the value of the personal branding, not only for the company, but for themselves, then it's a different kind of story. And uh, mistakes companies were making uh, are let's let's name a few. First of all, there are a lot of companies that have employees who are older ones. Usually those are older companies, 15 to 20 years old, when they have done marketing and sales a different way. And uh, basically, basically uh, they, they didn't post ever on social media, so they don't understand it. We need to hire first people that understand it. That's why I mentioned the culture and the values yeah. Uh, are are important and also uh, having having that in mind, it's important to do internal marketing to kind of uh, if we can sell uh, our products and services to our employees, then how can we sell it to somebody else? And if we can do it and get them excited, they will do it also for us. That's basically uh, the breakdown of everything. Yeah, no, I like that. Getting getting your own staff excited about what you do. Is why why are they going to post content about it if they don't really care 
what the product or service does and the outcomes and how it actually helps your customer, right? Cool, man. And then, yeah, you, you went on to, to talk about hammering down on the pain points. So is that about in the content that we produce or how, how do we know, how do we put that into play? What's the, what's the kind of tangible example that you've, you've utilized for that? Yeah, it's, it's just sharing, uh, sharing your experience in working with teams. Uh, actually, it's sharing the experience, results, case studies, and the way you are solving specific problems for your, for your clients or your customers. That's, that's it, just showcasing everything. I mean, we are transforming the profiles of employees into showcases. Mm. Basically, if somebody asks you, can you give me the showcase of what you're doing? Here's my profile. I'll share it every day. I talk every day about the way we are solving specific problems, the way we are talking with clients, with customers. And it's not only important to get new clients. It's important as well to retain the, the ones that we already have because a lot of our clients are looking at what we are posting on LinkedIn and they are like, uh, ah, so you are talking about it. Can we implement this uh, for our company as well? Can we do this thing? Can we do that thing? They also get ideas and get excited about some things even before we uh, we get the ideas to them. Okay. And, and when you're talking about utilizing them, are you talking about including this, the pain points we solve for our product or our service within our LinkedIn profile itself? Are you talking about to, um, putting it out in the content that we share or is it both or is there more to it? It's, it's both. Uh, it's it's both it's actually all kind of content that we are using i mentioned from the company side let me explain and just get back to this because there's a, a there's a round uh, <laughs> so uh, from the company's perspective on the company pages on linkedin uh let's say we focus on um main content pillars just like this one like uh, like a podcast like a blog post so we yeah. practically go two ways First way is to establish us as authorities. So inviting other authorities to, to the podcast and seeing them with us, it uh, gets our authority grow as well. Uh, and on the other hand, inviting people who are uh, our target accounts. So let's say we are targeting a person who is, uh, I don't know, CFO in a, in a fast growing company. We invite him on the podcast. We ask him about the, the buyer's journey uh, to explain each step of it. We ask him the way uh, they hire and they fire vendors. We ask him about the relationship, how everything is going. We ask them about how the decision-making process is going, how long does it takes. We ask them everything that we need to sell them afterwards. And by doing that, we... Uh, understand that we cannot just go two weeks after the podcast and feature them with something it's a long-term relationship that have just not started quite that easy yeah and it's it's a long sales cycle so it's not the client that we will do outreach afterwards and just try to pitch them with uh with services or the product it's a start of the building a long-term relationship and when we when we create the podcast like that then we we share on YouTube or at podcast platforms the the main content pillar. We send it to them the recordings as well. Then we we cut it into smaller pieces. We send that as well. We post it on the company pages and tag them. Basically, build the company page by uh, building uh, personal brands of our uh, ideal customers in that way. While we are doing that, we are also from the personal profiles, we are adding more people from the company. So basically more people relevant to us uh, can see the content. And that's how we start building, uh, building the relationship and slowly like shortening the sales cycle, but getting to know them and uh, establishing the relationship with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really good tip. So essentially we're talking about hosting or starting some kind of podcast or interview series whereby you bring on board your target account or your ideal client, ideal customer, and you literally ask them questions that you want to know that's that's going to help you as an organization to be able to sell to them in the future. So in, in your case, you're talking about how they buy their journey, what they look for in a vendor, 
all these all these questions, which is almost like a discovery call, really. Just um, edging it more yeah. towards, I guess, them them being able to record a discovery call, out of which you get a lot of content, which is all related. So you basically by by sharing that that content on the company page and on the personal profiles, basically you are uh, talking about covering all points in the buyer's journey. So you are covering not only the top of the funnel, but you are covering everything and educating not only the people that are over there, but also some other people. And that's uh, kind of important and where it goes. Now there, there's, a, there's a catch and uh, the catch is that content needs time to work. Usually when the company hires uh, a marketing agency, they expect them to give results right away. So let's say like the sales cycle lasts for, let's say three months. Uh, yep. they, they want to give to get results tomorrow <laughs> and when they hire somebody in sales they say you have three months to close the first sale uh, so it's kind of not not okay related to, to us like the marketing agency but anyway so how do we um, bridge bridge the gap we bridge the gap with ads because we need advertising to get content to work faster so uh, what do we do? We focus on Facebook and Instagram uh, for people to consume the content. So from that perspective, we create testimonials, case studies, uh, news like articles, those kind of things uh, that can be consumed in like three minutes. We distribute them in the Facebook feed on Instagram stories to two target groups. One is uh, the decision making. Uh, person and the other the other one are actually the people who are gonna use the product or the services so if we cannot get the decision making uh, maker to actually uh, look at it look at the video or actually read the article then we can have the second best which are the people who can actually uh, consume and use the, the product or the services to read it and then go to affect the decision making from from the bottom up so we just need them to uh, to react on a channel level. Then we see if the right people are reacting. If they are, then we following on the website. Are they reading the articles? Are they watching the videos? Uh, and if they are, then we know that we just need to wait uh, for as long as it takes for a decision to be made inside the company. They will come back and we will see that in the I don't know, free trials or scheduled calls or whatever it is, the, the CTA. And if that thing doesn't work, in most cases it works, but we can go additionally. Then when we know that people are interested in a specific content, in specific topics, specific case studies, then we can do maybe the, the retargeting as well and get them right. back, back over there because we know specifically what they are interested in and who they are. So to break that down a little bit, are we are we essentially saying that you're you're doing these podcasts or these interviews? We're we're putting together the original, let's say, long form piece of content, whether that's a video interview or audio only, and then because that might not get the full reach it needs through just putting it out organically, say for example through a LinkedIn personal profile, you're then driving additional reach to it by using things like um, Facebook ads or Instagram ads to to drive to get more eyeballs on it really through the through your your target customers and then from there they might go to your website for example check more content and eventually we're, we're trying to drive them towards that all-important conversion of requesting a demo or requesting a consultation but it's is it essentially looking to speed up the process from from how quickly this content can take action is that right yeah exactly uh like people forget that uh facebook and instagram aren't the sales first platforms so we are actually going along with the platform and distributing the content we are not going uh to the cold audience and asking them to buy right away i mean it's not logical it's not gonna happen nobody is buying that way they need to get to know us no matter if we are buying uh, I don't know, a uh, hundred dollars product or a thousand dollars product. It's not going to happen that way. There, there is a decision to be made, especially in B2B, in the longer sales cycle and in more expensive products. I mean, in most cases, all the companies have already, already have a vendor in place. They are using some other tools. 
So we need to get uh, them educated about us, who we are, how are we different than the others. Uh, and then there, there is a time that needs to pass that uh, their contract uh, is done with other vendor. So a lot of a lot of things to consider over there. You know, it's not just sure. we're going to do the advertising. They're going to come and and we're going to sell them. It's not how it goes. <laughs> okay, so. I mean, the manager. This this might be a tough one, and there might this. You might say, look, it, it all depends on the situation. But let's pretend we're, we're we're putting all these processes in play, and let's say our, our normal sales cycle. I don't know. Let's say we, we're selling a product that's perhaps fifty to one hundred k, and our typical sales cycle is five to six months. If we were to put in pro this process into play that we've just talked through, how much realistically would would that sales cycle be cut down by if we were to do what we've we've just chatted through? It all depends, but it can be cut in half. From what we are seeing, it takes around two and a half months for for it to start to start working and to start bringing bringing in results. And one thing that we didn't talk about what what's happening when you start bringing results, you know, because we don't have then like a uh, hundred MQLs. We have let's say three. We have three, so lower volume, higher, more quality. Uh, quality leads, uh, and when we have three, then we don't need ten people in sales. We can have only only one that's experienced, and when we have one that's experienced, the then the customer's experience is better because if we have ten, then if it's obvious that we have one who have just started to work and doesn't know everything, and maybe the customer experience is not the best. So when we have the best one, they will close it. And when we have more educated uh, customers that specifically said, I want to talk with sales, they specifically said that when they said that, then we're taking them to the sales. And if they are educated and they want to talk with sales, it's obvious the sales can close the bigger deals and the revenue will grow. Got it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I got a bit excited with the uh with the sales shortening cycle and uh, i'm glad <laughs> i'm glad you, you threw that in there so to, to hone in on that a bit further so we're talking about really really nurturing and, and educating our idle customer with the content we put out with the interviews we put out and then rather than just hounding or generating as many sales qualified leads as possible um we actually want real quality so people that have perhaps been following us for a while, they know what our company's about, they know our processes, they know perhaps a bit more about us personally and how we do things. So when they do come to us, when they do eventually take that action and inquire with us to, to discuss a project, they are that much warmer rather than just a lead we've kind of pushed through the funnel that we've got, that we're having a conversation with that might not really go anywhere. Is that about right? Yeah, and, and there's one thing uh, I want to say that we often forget and not only in B2B, but also in, B2, in B2C. People are kind of going in two directions, like yeah. going all on educating people and yeah. uh, or going the other way or just trying to sell, 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 sell. So there has to be a middle of it. So at one point, we need to have to say, OK, we, we gave you this kind of information. We gave you the case studies. We gave you. Uh, we, we showed you that we are an authority in the field. We showed that we know what we are doing. We show you the results. Now it's your time to come and buy, you know? So uh, we don't need, we actually mustn't forget those things. You got to ask, right? Um, yeah, you got to go with that. How are you seeing results from that? So when it comes to ask, are you... Could you perhaps give us an example, the manager? Is that is that through the ads you put out? Once you know someone's seen X amount of contact, you, you put an ad saying, "Are you ready to get in touch?" Or are you doing that through perhaps the post you put out on LinkedIn, or is it a mix of all the above? Yeah, look, uh, we we always have uh, a solution ready for if somebody is ready to buy. So we gotta make it out there. We gotta have our website ready for conversions. We gotta have our LinkedIn or other social media profiles optimized from conversions. When somebody wants to buy and it's ready, they need to see it. They don't need to go and look for it. And we need to constantly be there 
and there there needs to be a cpa even if it's like let's chat in comments that's also a cpa we don't need to go with like the link to to go and uh use the free trial but just let's chat let's have a, let's have a conversation those kind of things and uh, amongst the all the educational posts sometimes we just need to say okay this is the the results that we are having if you want to go into that if you're ready go ahead and uh send us the send us just a message let's let's get into it i mean just to to mention uh until I had like 10,000 connections on LinkedIn, I was sending uh, a welcome message to each one of my new connections. So uh, this is how I learned if my content is okay. This is how I got the feedback because there are a lot of people that don't engage over there in the feed, but they are reading everything. And if you do that, especially if you don't have that much connections from the start, this is how you will get you will get the feedback and some of them are already ready but if you don't approach them they will never do the first step and this is this is all what happened to me you know and i'm using kind of my personal profile to try out things and then i'm implementing that for the clients as well interesting so you're everyone that you connect with on linkedin you're you're dropping a little message are you or you're actually asking them for feedback on how they like your content or yeah, I was I was doing that. Nothing, just sending uh, a welcome message, like welcome, welcome to to my community. This is what I do in one sentence. Just giving them a link to the website, not salesy, not anything. If you want to get more, go ahead over there. Let's say I used to send them the link, which is like how to um, how to create your B two B content machine, something that's of value to them. Sure. Uh, and I'm asking. The, the whole message is about them. Like, I want to get to know you a little bit better. And that's it. I'm just starting the conversation, nothing else, not trying to sell. I'm generally the guy who likes to uh, to get to know people and learn more about them. And it's it's seen in the content. And that's that's how I go. Um, uh, and it's kind of different than what other people are doing, because a lot of them have hidden messages like trying to sell but trying to like shape it up to look nice and people yeah, are not yeah 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 i'm sure anyone who's been on linkedin for more than five minutes has probably had a dm trying to pitch them so i think yeah i mean i, I had a tweet, like, happy birthday man uh and then the next message is <laughs> yeah yeah how are you look at demo below um yeah we've <laughs> seen a few of those that's for sure um all right, Lamandra, I want to throw a bit of a spanner in the works. I know we're coming up to time, but we've um, we've covered some great great points, especially the the fact of interviewing your ideal buyers, your ideal clients, and really asking the questions that you want to know to then be able to start relationships, kick relationships off, and then get on the process of shortening sales cycles for those juicier, bigger projects and deals. What if we don't like podcasting? What if we don't like interviewing? What can we do then? There are always a lot of a lot of other things. Like when we start working with companies, almost all of them have good content which is forgotten uh, on the website. I'm talking about written content. They they uh, created it for the SEO and they shared it maybe maybe once in their social media pages, and they have like 14 likes which is their employees and maybe their relatives and 40 people may have seen the content and that's it. And it's a quality content. So we use that content to kind of give it the tone of voice and craft the posts for the people from the company and actually show the content uh, in the feed. And that's also one of the ways that, that it can be done. Also, the other ways are different kind of content. We can go with the, with the visuals, we can go with, with some other stuff but uh if if they don't want to get like uh videos that's perfectly fine i mean just audio is always a good thing for somebody who is like let's say a little bit shy when it comes to the looks and everything because audiograms can be really good uh, on linkedin people aren't watching videos just to watch videos just like they do it on the youtube they they actually read the videos they read the transcriptions and uh it's totally different than some other things and like if you 
compare the all kinds of content that we have on LinkedIn, let's say text, photo, um, LinkedIn decks, videos. Usually videos are the ones that people underestimate. And um, when we look, not the likes, but when we look at how many views the videos has, then we're talking about, let's say 300 and we have 10 likes. And it's totally underestimated metric people don't pay attention to. And uh, I have seen not only for us, but for the clients that a lot of people are coming up and uh, directly in their inbox, uh, coming up with a proposal, with a potential cooperation, anything based on the videos that they have watched. Because in the video, we can actually sh show the way we smile, who are we as a personality, like how is our tone of voice, what's our accent, you know, those kind of things they can get to know us. And when they do, usually it's that small thing that makes the difference. Yeah, that, that's awesome. That's something I'd not thought about much. So essentially what we're saying there is if you don't want to do the podcast interviews or interview your ideal client, perhaps you haven't got time, perhaps you, you just don't want to do that. If you've got old content, on your website so we're talking about old blogs old articles maybe old videos you can repurpose those spice those up but give it your personal brand edge give it that tone of voice like you said so it's it makes sense to post out on linkedin so essentially we're talking about digging out stuff you've already done spending a little bit of time rejigging it so it fits the fits the purpose so in this case linkedin and there you go you've got some got some content to, to crack on yeah, with I mean, the, the main the main thing here is involve your clients and your customers in creating content with you that's that's the main thing that's how you start a relationship with them that's how you create better content that's how you uh optimize your content for distribution even before you start creating it and there's also one thing that i uh, i want to say and not that many people are saying it i think actually no one is recommending this but we have tried it in the last month and a half uh, and it is if you want to focus on getting more people on the website from LinkedIn and to kind of test the market or test the product or get more people to do the trial, sign up for them or whatever it is the CTA, share relevant links from your website. That also works. You won't get as many likes. You won't optimize for the reach. But if you are already active on LinkedIn, you have the active audience, you have the active engagement, when you when you share links you know every couple of days you will get people to the website and you will increase the traffic and it will be all relevant people because you are connecting with relevant people on on linkedin and uh it works people say that linkedin doesn't actually uh work if you add links which are not in the comment it works you just don't get as much reach and as likes as you will get if you don't do it but you you get relevant people interested in specific topics to come to your website like it like it yeah so again, I, I mean i guess like you say you won't get the reach that you would typically from an organic post but it's making it easier if someone's looking at the post to click straight through because they don't have to trawl through the comment section if there's a lot of comments there they can just literally click the link in the post and go straight to the relevant page exactly awesome there's been a lot of gold today, Nemanja. Really appreciate you sitting down with us and sharing some some really actionable strategies on how we can speed up our sales cycle, get more deals in, and and leverage that from from LinkedIn and various other content channels. So thanks very much for coming on. Really enjoyed the chat. Um, do tell us more about how everyone can learn from you, how they can connect with you, and the best way to get in touch. Yeah, first thanks thanks for inviting me and thanks for the chat. I really enjoyed it as well. Uh, even though you are in uh, red and white which is like uh, the, the club that I dislike the most because we have like partisan in red star, partisan in black and white, red star is red and white. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, people can reach me anywhere uh, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook. We even have the Facebook group called Funky Marketing, uh, around uh, 25,000 people over there. Uh, but I mean, LinkedIn is where I'm sharing the, the most content. They can find me over there or they can just go funkymarketing.net and find a lot of things that we're doing. So we have, um, 
B2B weekly podcast where with Marty Sanchez be analyzing uh, the way B2B companies work and also share a lot of gold of how we are growing our companies. We have funky marketing podcast when we are interviewing authorities in the field and also share a lot of interviews with, uh, with relevant people from the, from the industry as well. And I mean, that's it. Just Google Nehemiah Zuko with funky marketing and you will find me. Good man. And we will put all of those links over in the show notes at businessgrowth.marketing. And I want to thank you once again, the manager. Really enjoyed the chat, dude. Thank you very much. time. I enjoyed it as well. And thanks for uh, keeping me company while in COVID isolation. <laughs> no worries, man. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to hit subscribe for Business Growth Show wherever the heck you get your podcasts, be it Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or somewhere else. We interview business leaders each and every week to provide actionable tips to increase your marketing results, grow your business, and generate more sales. We'll catch you on the next episode. Cheers.